Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Chikimiak II, and I am the Digital Painter. All right, today we're going to continue our series on Corel Painter 2016. Now, some of these settings will be the same in 2015 or X3, but I'm working in 2016 because I did get the upgrade. We're gonna be looking at the brush preferences, and this is huge because the ability to change the brush, to make it look and feel and, and, and react like you want it to react, is a large part of why Corel Painter is so amazing. Now, before we jump right in, if you're watching this on YouTube, I ask that you hit the subscribe button, enjoy all my videos, or don't enjoy all my videos, just write comments. I respond to comments. I like comments. Or, if even better, if you want to, go to thedigitalpainter.com. That's my website. I have all my tutorials there, blog posts, podcasts. It's where I do a little bit of everything. So definitely check out that as well. All right, let's jump right in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up Corel Painter. There we go. Hello, Corel Painter, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. Corel Painter really doesn't talk to me and I don't view it as an imaginary friend, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so what we're looking at today is we're looking at this box right here. And this box is our brush preferences box. If you don't have it showing, you can click the window and scroll down to brush control panels and really choose any of these and it'll open up the entire thing. So, or control B will do it. So if I hit control B, oh, there we open and close, open and close, open and close. All right, oops, I accidentally put something on the paper. Must erase it. Clean, much better. All right, so we're gonna do stroke preview through general today. Stroke preview is exactly that. You get a preview of what your stroke will look like on the canvas. So if I were to lay something down, all right, so there's my stroke and it's being previewed, okay? The next one is our dab preview. Whoops, didn't mean to pull it out. That's with too many clickies, there we go. Our dab preview essentially looks at your brush and looks at the end of it and you've got three settings here. If you hover over this, this previews the size and shape. So if I were to come in and increase the size, ooh, suddenly my preview is bigger, then increase it bigger and it doesn't get any bigger than that, unfortunately. But if we go back smaller, there we go, okay? The second one previews the angle, or previews hard media, I'm sorry. The first one is size and shape. Second one, preview hard media. Okay, we're gonna get into that stuff later. And then the last one previews a brush dab. So if I click that and see, notice that my dab looks like that. And if I were to change my tool to say, I don't know, let's change it to an airbrush. Okay, so now it looks like that. Oops. And there we go. We get that. Come again back over here and you've got your preview hard media. So this is an airbrush, this is broad wheel airbrush is what I'm working with here. If we go to digital airbrush, we can see, well, that's gonna be the same. So let's find something that might be a little different, maybe image hose. Nope. A lot of these look very similar. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things. Oh, here we go. So this is our size hard media, but then here is our, if we were to dab it, and let me make it really big so we can see, and even bigger, oh, that's too big, oh, there we go, I went too big, oh, maybe I didn't go too, oh, yes, I did go too big, entirely too big, let's go back down to here, see, and you can see I had to do a couple, but you see it's a line straight up and down, very similar to this, okay? So that's what your dab preview is. It's 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 showing you what your end of the brush. Now, I'm, I don't usually go into dab preview. Uh, I'm usually stuck on stroke preview, which gives us a little more information, okay? And then you have brush calibration here. And what this does is it calibrates your brush. So you can ena enable it, and you can adjust the velocity scale, the velocity power, brush scale, 
pressure power. Now, none of this is necessary for me because I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet. So all of those settings are controlled by the tablet and not by Corel Painter, okay? So I could use this, but this is what I use. And I'll show you how I got to that real quick. See the little icon here, set brush calibration settings. Click that. This is our brush calibration settings. And what it does is it will calibrate your, your tablet based on how you draw. So if you read the directions here, draw a brush stroke in the above area, building up to maximum pressure and speed. The values are adjusted in response to the brush rate. Now, if we look over here, we'll see, let me jump to default. We're in our default, okay? But if I were to come here, and I go, so starting light and slow, and then building up and fast. And this is roughly what I'm getting here, okay? This curve. I could do that. I could do really slow. So you can see this changes in the amount of pressure, okay? So a very little pressure until near the end where it builds very quickly. And what you want is again I tend to use the default because it works for me but if if you feel like your brush strokes you're having to press too hard or you're not getting light enough uh, light enough strokes when you're painting come into your brush tracking and try and get it calibrated so I'm gonna try boom and I accidentally hit my button there so we're gonna try again so slow oops let's try again slow and light and then fast boom so you can see there is where my calibration is set. And then if you click OK, now that's going to make, so let me grab a brush that's actually usable and you guys can see. So let me move this. This is my slow and light. And this one doesn't get bigger as I go. So I need something that does something like maybe an acrylic. Let me see. Yep, there we go. So this is light and slow and then fast and hard. You can see it got thicker. Now I'm, you know, you could build the thickness up. You can see now we have a little more general gradation there. But now the lighter I brush, the thinner they are. The harder I brush, the thicker they are. And all that can be calibrated right there in your set calibration settings, okay? So definitely play a little bit around with that. That's going to help you a lot in getting your tablet set exactly how you want. Okay. Next up, we come down here. Yeah, I keep pulling this out by accident. I've got to stop doing that. And now I can't get it back in. Oh, buggery boo. <laughs> I'll have to reset my setup here later. I'm not going to mess with that right now. We'll just move those off to the side. This is one of the things that I kind of mess up on from time to time. All right, now we're looking at the general tab. And what the general tab does, it shows us our dab type, our stroke type, and a couple of other things. Now, this is something that you're going to want to play with, because if we click on dab type right now, you'll see there are a lot of different dab types, OK? Ranging from circular to camel hair to you know, ink palette knives to watercolors, and you'll see them change as I change brushes. So if I were to grab a watercolor, a real watercolor brush, and grab real water sketcher, you can see now it's changed to static bristle, stroke type is single, method is wet, real wet buildup, and this doesn't have source turned on. So now when I use this, okay, it's using these settings versus if I were to grab the pencil, grab pencil, my 2B, which is my favorite, 2B or not 2B? That is the question. Where 2B is just using a circular, it's using single. The big one here is a grainy soft cover. We could do, so if we were to look at this, I'm going to bring the size up considerably so you can see. Grainy soft cover versus a grainy hard cover. You can see the difference between those two. 
cover means that it covers over top of under method but what if I were to do wet look at that and it's bleeding okay so my pencil is bleeding ah all right we could switch wet to build up and we come over here and we get all sorts of weird things going on you could switch to marker and now I'm using my pencil tool as a marker all right so that's where again you can adjust these as much here's a static press oh not enough memory huh i'm eating up a lot of memory doing this so I'll, I'll have to go back on that uh you could change to a single pixel which is really small on this you could change to let's grab the palette knife okay so you can adjust this however you want and what i encourage you to do now is go through and just look to see what all these settings are for the different ones so for example say a sumi brush and the dry ink sumi 2 is using a dynamic speckle brush single buildup grainy hard buildup okay all right that's it for this week we've covered the stroke preview which shows you uh, a representation of the stroke the dab preview which gives you information about your brush brush calibration which will help to calibrate the brush to your tablet as well as the general which gives you multiple informational pieces on how your brush is created next week we're going to continue on or the next time i do one on corel painter uh, opacity through the dab profile and the dab profile is really interesting i have been playing a little bit with that all right, I hope you're enjoying these. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II. Hit that subscribe button. I am the digital painter and continue working on your art. Take care.